Well done, Luke. 60 to 16 as we turn to Susanna. Susanna. Well, I thought I'd talk about motherhood, given that Rachel was on her way to it. Susie already is, and I recently became a mother too. So I thought I'd talk about historic motherhood, um, and I start with conception. So before the pill, options for contraception were frankly ineffective and unappealing and unaffordable, things like sheaves made out of pig's intestines. So few people bothered, which meant that when people were married or women are married, they were pregnant on average every other year. And this meant that they ended up having six or seven or eight pregnancies. And women, especially the elites, inadvertently increased this by not breastfeeding. So they would send their babies out to wet nurse and this meant they removed that contraceptive effect. So for example, Bess of Hardwick, uh, married to Sir William Cavendish for 10 years in the 1550s, gave birth to her first daughter Frances after 10 months um, and then probably had children at about almost yearly intervals, um, giving birth eight times. So most women for the middle of their lives were pregnant about half the time, which is quite a thought. Um, it was believed until the 18th century that if you needed both men and women to climax in order to conceive and that the moment of conception, the amount of heat would tell you whether it was a boy or a girl. So if it was hot, it would be the perfect male. And if it was not hot enough, it would be the deformed male, i.e. a female. <laughs> and the question was how women would know they were pregnant. This was before blue lines on wands and scans. So they had to try and figure it out. They might stop menstruating, but they often stop because of malnutrition. There's a question about feeling sick and going off their food, longing after strange things, whether they had pains in their stomachs. Um, other things they say are being merry or sad with no manifest cause, sour belchings, a discoloured face. Um, one 18th century woman reports that she knew she was pregnant from a certain discharge from her nose, another that she had blood rising to the left-hand side of her face. But most of the diaries suggest that women knew within a month or two, but couldn't give a very accurate reckoning of when they were due. So doctors, some doctors would conclude that pregnancy could last 10 months or longer. And finally, whether it was a boy or a girl, of course, they didn't have a scan to tell them. But following the humoral system of medicine, they concluded that if a woman had bright eyes and had a blush on her right cheek, it would be a boy. And if she were cooler and paler, it would be a girl. Wow. <laughs> What's an extraordinary thing? And this is only sort of 500 years ago. Yes, it's not long at all. And uh, of course, there's much, just that sense of uncertainty. We are in a very different age. I mean, even if you go back 30, 40 years, uh, women weren't having scans um, necessarily to, to get to know, see their baby before their baby was born. So actually, this is all quite recent, um, this new age we live in of certainty. Amazing. Thank you so much, Susanna. Now it's 60 to 16. Luke in the lead, and it's Zach's letters game. Zach. Uh, consonants, please. Thank you, Zach. V. A vowel. E. A consonant. 